Here is a list I have in Excel 2010 and if I'm going to do this in Excel 2007 it works in a similar way. For 2003 or if you're using it on the Mac in 2004 and 2008 I have a separate video on how to do this which is auto filtering. And what this does is it allows me to filter out information here so I might just want to see in this list I've got the date, software, level, location, number of trainees and so on. What I want to do is filter out certain bits of information so I might want to see just training that happened in London, I might also want to see training that happened in London on Excel and I might want to see training that happened between particular dates. I can also see what were the courses that had the most number of trainees, so the top five and I might also want to see the lowest, the bottom five so I can actually do some analysis there as well. So the way that I do this is I can go into sort and filter here and choose filter or I can go into my data tab, so I was on the home tab for that. If I go into my data tab there is a filter button here. In the previous versions it actually said auto filter so if you're looking at Excel 2003 it actually said auto filter but here it just says filter but it does the same thing. So if I click on filter what you'll see is it's now got these drop down boxes across the top. And if I want to filter just here on London I simply click on that drop down and what I do is I can untick the ones I don't want such as Oldgate and Hammersmith. If I wanted all of them I just simply tick select all. Now if that was a bigger list what you might want to do is untick select all and then just tick the ones that you do want. And if I click on OK you'll see it's now just got London there, you'll see it's hidden the rows so row 5 is missing, 9 and 10 down here. That's all it does when it filters and you can see at the top here that the icon has changed so it shows a little funnel there to indicate that it's being filtered. If you used Excel 2003 or on the Mac 2004 and 2008 when you clicked here you didn't have these ticks you just simply chose either London or Hammersmith or Aldgate. However here you can actually choose to have London and Hammersmith or Aldgate. Click on OK and you've got it there. I'm just going to switch it back to just see London and click on OK. I'm also now just going to go over to software so I'm now filtering on more than one column and for this I'm going to click on select all to deselect everything and then just click on Excel. So I could choose Excel, Access, Word and leave the others out so that would give me the office including as well their PowerPoints. You'll notice up at the top here it's also got sort A to Z, sort Z to A so I can do sorting here as well. You may have seen the tutorial on how to sort in Excel and you can also sort by colour if you had different colours in here but I'm not going to go into any of those right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on OK. So now what I'm seeing is London and Excel. If I want to actually see all of the London ones again I go click here and now what I do is just select all and that will show me everything here but I'm still filtered on London. If you ever just want to switch off your filter like here if I click on that it just shows you everything. So if I click back on it I then have to switch my filter back on so I'm just going to go back to London. So there is a custom filter as well. What I can do I want to filter now between particular dates. I just want to see all of those for January this year. You'll see some are for February as well. And I'm just going to click and now I'm just going to choose date filters and you can now see it's got a whole load of choices here. So I can filter on dates for tomorrow, today, yesterday, next week, this week. You can see there's a whole range of them. And I could just simply go into my custom filter which is what you would have done in 2003 and you would have chosen that it is after or equal to, it used to say greater than or equal to and I would just put in the date here and I can also do the same that I have it before or equal to and really I could have just clicked on this little filter here and chosen the date or I could have just typed it in. You'll see it's got wildcards here so you can use an asterisk so if you want to put in something like advanced if you're looking in the level column you could type in ADV with the asterisk and it would do the rest. 
So I'm just going to click on OK. So this is kind of like the old way of doing it. So if I wanted to get rid of all of that, I could have just gone to Select All, and they're all back. So the other option, which you didn't have in 2003, is to go here, go to your date filters, and I could have chosen between. And it would have automatically have put in is after or equal or before equal. So you don't even have to know that. And I could just then choose my dates here. And I could choose any applicable dates. It's actually going to be faster for me to type that in. Click on OK. And it's done the same thing there as well. So you have a whole load of options here. You can have anything for a specific date, before a particular date, after a particular date. You've also got year to date. And you've also got dates in a particular period, such as January. I could have just chosen January or February. So it's really made it easy. You can do the custom ones here as well. So you've got text filters for looking for something that equals a particular sort of value that you're looking for, which say could be London. You could have it so it doesn't equal London, that it begins with something. So if it anything that begins with L or ends with one, or that it contains. So it might be a word inside that or does not contain. And you could also do the custom filter as well. So loads and loads of options. And I have to say, in this version, they've made it really, really easy. In the older versions, you had to really go into, that's before 2007, and use the custom filter and know quite a bit about what you were doing. Not complicated, but you had to know what you were doing there. So let's just uh, click on OK there. Let's just show all of the dates. And I'm also going to show all of the locations. So there we go. So what I'm going to do now is I want to see those courses that had the most number of trainees. Now for this, I'm just going to go to the number of trainees here, click here. And if I go to number filters, you'll see that there's one here that says top 10. There's also an above average and below average, but I'm going to have a look at the top 10. You can play around with the above average and below average. So it's quite obvious that anything above an average is going to be filtered and show you and below average. So with the top 10, I'm just going to choose that. Now, everyone who looks at that at first thinks it's just going to show you the top 10. So the top 10 courses with the most number of trainees. But in fact, you could have the bottom number. So you could see the one with the least number, so the bottom 10. And it doesn't have to be 10. There's just an expression, top 10. I can change that to anything I like. So I'm going to look for the top 5, not the top 10. And here it says items. So by choosing the top 10 or the top 5, I actually get 5 or 10 items showing. The alternative is, is to have a percent. So if I had top 10% and there were 200 items there, I would see 20 items. So that's another way of actually being able to do it. So you can see it as a percentage, top 10%, or actually the top 10 items. I'm going to choose items in this case, click on OK, and you can see the courses here. They're the ones with the highest. So I've got 20, 10, 10, 10, and two nines. And in fact, because there's two that are equal there, it's showing me actually six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that is how you do the auto filter on Excel 2007 and also Excel 2010, and you've been watching it here on Excel 2010.